Hi, greetings. This is Ann Sieg, and this is going to be part two of my leadership series that I've got here on the Renegade blog. I just did uh, part one last week, and I shared with you uh, the motivation, or probably more so what I would call the inspiration that uh, gave me this idea to do the leadership series. So I'm going to dive into uh, part two. And like I said, um, I don't know how long this will go. It's going to be as long as I'm inspired to continue uh, focusing on what I believe are leadership qualities or attributes. So what we're going to focus on this week is a really, really big quality that I believe is absolutely 100% integral to success in business, to success in marketing, to success as an entrepreneur, and that's courage. That's having courage. Because when you have courage, you're going to better be able to rally your mental and moral forces to align with that courage. So what is courage? I think it'll help to define that and what courage provides you. And then we're going to look at what I call the antithesis, the opposite of what courage is. And that will help better shore up why I believe courage is integral to success in business. So. Courage is the will to do. I will do this and this. And so I call it a declaration of intent, uh, something that moves you to make that declaration. And as a result of that, which takes a lot of chutzpah, some, some guts, you know, whether you make that declaration uh, to your family. And when I say declaration, it starts with you first and foremost. You're kind of like that you know, the line in the sand and I'm gonna do this thing. So it begins internally as you, you do your self-talk and you, you know, something triggers and just flips you into this, I'm gonna do this thing, right? And kind of that, that momentum, that emotion, I'm gonna do this thing if it kills me, I'm gonna do it, okay? So that would be courage and again, I call that a declaration of intent. That's will, I am going to will this into existence and we do that. And I'm going to talk about what drives and what fuels that, but more so again, back to that declaration of intent is first to yourself and then you find yourself maybe telling your spouse, you tell your kids, you tell uh, your parents, your siblings, whomever, that it's kind of like this, my mind is made up and I'm going to do this, okay? And, and the, the, the sense of urgency and significance that you give to this it, it's kind of like you, you throw a rock into the water. Now some people, they throw that in and it's just like, oop, it's a little plop, and maybe just a few little ripples come out of that when you make your declaration of intent. Others, because maybe they know of your background or they can just sense it from your emotions and your, the strength of your conviction and resolve and that you're resolute, you make that declaration of intent and people are like, whoa, look out, this thing is happening. And that would be you're throwing a boulder into the water and it ripples out big. And that's what happens. You, you speak it to a sense into existence. We are designed to be creators. And part of that creative process is the use of our auditory, uh, our ability to speak it out what we want to bring into existence. So I'm gonna give you a case in point of that. Um, my eldest son is my business partner and this was back in the spring of 2011 and we were masterminding on a particular uh, plan, a marketing, uh, it was actually very significant what we were planning to do and we were starting to shape out and formulate how we would do this. So we had to determine the dynamics of our industry, what's changed, what doesn't work, what we think will work. So we're doing all this masterminding, hypothesizing, theorizing what we would need to do to really make something happen in a big way. So we did all these conversations and at this time, that is when we came up with our proprietary webinar system. That was at, at that time. And I'll never forget uh, when I told my son, I'm gonna say, I said, I'm gonna kill this thing. I'm gonna destroy it meaning we're gonna do this, you know, we had formulated our plan, but I let him know that was my declaration of intent. 
I'm going to kill this thing. And, and I, I knew for a fact I was going to be able to do that. Now, how, how could I say that? It wasn't a crazy, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to fly to the moon. It wasn't something insane and ridiculous like that, but it was pretty big. But here's why I could say that with so much certainty. In fact, I, I kind of took out this little scrap of paper from a, a notepad and I, I wrote out, I will be number one producer, boom, and I stuck it on my bulletin board and it's like, that's going to happen, done in the hopper, okay? So what preceded that to give me that kind of strength of conviction, that declaration of intent that transpired between me and my business partner to say, it's as good as done, gonna kill it, gonna destroy it. Now, if those sound like kind of, ooh, kind of fighting words, this, that, yeah, you know what? Yeah, business is not for the faint of heart. You gotta have a chutzpah, you gotta have guts, you gotta have courage. You gotta have courage. Because when I made that declaration of intent, I knew the work ahead of me too. Yeah, I knew real well. I would be working my fanny off. I would be working until late at night, pouring over stats, you know, letting this all rumble and tumble in my brain while I was sleeping so I could wake up in the morning with solutions. I knew exactly, oh, if you want to call it, you know, I don't know if I want to say the war zone I was entering into, but sorta, kinda. I knew it was going to be a lot, a lot of stinking work, but I was prepared for it. I was ready for the fight because I'm going to get it done. Now, yes, I'm wanting to meet a specific objective, okay? You know, we're going to just totally kick butt with this marketing system. We're going to make some really big things happen, but it's more this. Always, as you develop courage, you, you decide on something you want to achieve and don't make it so big, fat, and Herculean, something you've never done before. You know, if you're brand new to marketing, you wouldn't be saying, oh yeah, I'm gonna have this webinar system done and we're gonna create six figures in six months. I mean, you're not gonna be saying that when you're brand new. I could say it, because I've got a track record. So if you scale it back, you're new and you're going, well, great, Anne, you could do that big declaration of intent. How about me? I'm I'm new, I'm just getting going. Well, let's talk about that. So I'm gonna go back in time. For me, this would have been eight years ago when I was first getting online and I got into a specific training and it was hard and it was grueling. And I even was hitting a wall where I was starting to doubt. I was starting to doubt. But then I had to rally my mental and moral forces to say, no, this wall, it may be there, but it's just a perception and I'm gonna beat that wall down because I've got to prove to myself I can get this done. And that's really pretty much how I look at all of it. it it's kind of, like, kind of like playing a game. I look at it as a game. I mean, putting together a webinar system is no way an end all be all kind of a deal at all. It's simply, well, there's that plateau. I'm shooting for it and I'm going to get her done. Why? Because there's going to be new vistas, new plateaus that I'm going to scout out and go, you know what? And now I'm onto that one. Because overall, my objective is to continually armor and equip myself, equip myself with my skills. And the more I can develop those and take ownership of them, the more I can direct and control my destiny. The more I can slap on. I have a very specific one that I want a new skill set, not entirely new, but I've, I've had it and it's like this big desire. I'm going to develop this next skill. And the stronger that desire is and that intent, well, then those opportunities to develop and exercise out that particular skill set, guess what happens? They start showing up for me because I put it on notice. I want this. Now, are you noticing in this conversation, I'm not necessarily talking about money immediately. 
because I know the money comes as a result of me stepping up to the plate. I see that plateau of a skill to learn, like, you know, for me mastering that webinar system and knocking her down. Okay, that's, that's a skill. That just, that just means I've shimmied up the ladder and now I can look at yet another higher vista and say, no, I'm going after that one. So you start incrementally. So mine back eight years ago was a certification program. I was uh, to master the consultative selling process. I hit that wall of some self-doubt and oh, ah, I'm two, three months out and ah, no, not a, I don't have a sale yet. And I could have given up. I could have quit. And I got to say, shame on you when you do that. Because here's the worst part of it. You maybe started having some people follow you because they're watching. But then you lay down your sword. And you're like, I, I'm weary. I, I thought results would come faster, so I'm giving up. And then you lost that momentum that I was working hard. I was doing my dials, I was doing the tracking, sending out my emails. I'm like, what gives? Come on, man, what gives? But I leaned into the wind, because I thought, what if I give up? What if I lay down my sword and I give up? Am I willing to live with myself if I do that? And you know what, no I'm not. Because let's get down to the deepest part of this whole thing of that declaration of intent and courage. Because isn't it funny when courage gets rallied up in a real fast way when it hits you at a biological level of survival? Now I'm a woman, so I'm gonna speak directly to the women. You know that kicks in when it comes to one of your, your children, something happening, you go into mother bear like nobody's business, don't you? And I would call that courage. I mean, you'd take down anybody when it comes to your kid. Am I not mistaken? Why can't we take that same innate, wired in biological responses? They happen just like that, don't they? Why can't we grab a hold of that same power, that same force that gets flipped on just like a switch without us even working or having to think about it? And why can't we take it here into our business? And, and our work as a, an entrepreneur, take that same energy, that adrenaline, the chutzpah, everything that comes with fighting off those forces, right? And rallying in the good mental and moral forces. So let's pare it down where I believe it kicks in. Well, for one is like I shared is I'm going to get it done. That kind of result, that shows you just got it. How does that happen? Well, it shapes out differently for a lot of folks. Mine, I kind of got, you know, beat down as a kid, teasing and the like, and, and it hurt at the time. But inside, there was a fire starting to burn that, okay, you can take me down now, but I'll tell you what, someday, I'm gonna be able to resist this kind of stuff and it's not gonna hurt me the way it did when I was a kid. It did something good for me, you know, taking those negative things and turning them into good. That's what happened for me uh, as a kid, the getting teased and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the other is this. What will fuel your courage is just think about uh, the desire. Why are you doing what you're doing? And then from there, you're going to create what's called an intensification process. You're gonna do everything you can to intensify this desire that you have. And I hope you all have some kind of desire. I'm guessing you do. Now I wanna share a quick little story and then we're gonna give this a wrap. I was just speaking with a gentleman yesterday from the UK. Absolutely wonderful gentleman, so gracious. He had, he had such an attractive personality. It was just so, it was such a pleasing personality, wonderful, pleasing disposition. But he, he's kind of going through this transformational phase right now, and it was really interesting. He said, oh, I'm sorry I'm for sharing so much and being so candid. I said, no, I love it. Well, and, and he said how, you know, I, I had some of these feelings some years ago, and, and they're kind of being re resurrected again. And he said, you know, I, I had all this enthusiasm and this dream and ambition. It was several years ago. I was sharing it with someone, and I said, I'm going to influence a million people's lives. And then you know what this other person said to him? They said, 
that's not going to happen. You're not going to influence a million people's lives. And I told this gentleman, I said, yeah, you can. Anything is possible. I have a subscriber list of over 350,000 people. What if someone had told me 10 years ago, oh, Ann, seriously, come on now, you, you, you can't really influence people at that level. I mean, maybe 10 or 15, but millions, you know, hundreds of thousands, no, nah, not for you, Ann, you should really give it up. Okay, those are the dream squashers. Those are the people who they maybe have what is the antithesis of courage? They're maybe cowards. So let me bring you over into my coward space, my coward land. No, we don't believe in those kind of possibilities. You can't, you can't influence a million people. So they just want to kind of pull you into their coward space. And that's going to be really integral as you shape your courage as a leader. Stay away from the cowards. Stay away. Keep them out of harm's way. And how do you know when someone's a coward? It comes down really simply. You can judge this in your business, your daily business activities. Business is all about solving problems. So if you flinch at problems, you probably shouldn't be in business, okay? But you can watch a coward because they run from the problems. Oh, they throw their sword down so fast it's not even funny. I knew this thing didn't work which is the excuse in the blame game, and they're gone, or they blame someone else or whatever it is. They are cowards. And we don't like to use those kind of terms, but let's just call it what it is. That's cowardness. Call it timid. I don't think meek is the right term here. It's just cowardice. And we can't have that. So you should run and separate yourself from those kind of people, and you better figure out real fast when you're speaking that cowardice language, track it track when you're speaking cowardly messages to yourself and you might find oh my lord i 15 times today i did coward self-talk okay until you track you don't know how often you're repeating those messages and start speaking like a courageous person who's got their sword out and you're ready to deal with the business problems because they're they're never ending but you should be excited about them instead all right so that's our focus today is to build up your courage so that you can rally your mental and moral forces. And when you do that, people will begin to follow you until you start throwing those big boulders in the water and it creates this massive ripple effect because you are courageous. You've got some goals and objectives to meet and you've got people who are counting on you. All right, I'd like you to share your comments with me on this topic of courage and how you're going to build up courage in your business. We'll be talking to you next week in leadership quality number three. Bye-bye.